Good morning, this is Daryl Peterson with Micromeasurements. Uh, this morning I'm taking a look at uh, two strain gauges that have been installed on a small aluminum uh, shaft and we're constructing a full torque bridge and I wanted to take just a minute and show you this uh, gauge installation. Uh, these are the Micromeasurements, they are a CEA series strain gauge and what that means they've got large copper coated tabs to make the soldering easier and also all of the CEA series gauges will have a protective film over top the grid. Really that's there to protect it from me and you while we're trying to get them installed. Uh, these particular strain gauges are CEA 13 187UV-350. Uh, the 13 means it's temperature compensated for the material which in this case is aluminum or compensated for materials that, other materials that expand at 13 parts per million per degree Fahrenheit. Uh, it's a dual element strain gauge. If you look at it closely, you'll see that there's two grids on this gauge, one uh, perpendicular to the other, and they're both oriented at a plus or minus 45 degree direction uh, from the long axis of the strain gauge. Additionally, these uh, strain gauges have one common uh, connection in between the two grids. So essentially uh, we're producing it so that you would build at least a half bridge and in this case we're going to build a full bridge uh, using these two strain gauges. This is a very common configuration for measuring uh, torque on a shaft. The other nice thing about doing it this way is that when you put one gauge on the the front and one gauge on the back if you will and you wire them together properly uh, this type of circuit will be very sensitive to the torsion in the tube, but also very insensitive to all the other, uh, unwanted loading conditions, which would be, for example, like an axial load or maybe like a bending load if you were to try to bend the shaft. So this is an advantage of using these two 187 UVs in a full bridge is that it cancels bending, cancels axial, and is sensitive to the torsion. Right now I'm just inspecting it. I'm going to shine a little more light onto the uh, strain gauges so we can see them a little bit better and um, here I'm just looking to make sure that the entire grid is well bonded. You can see as, as I rotate this around no evidence of corners being lifted. Um, both of these gauges look uh, really good at this point. So basically now we're ready to um, start our wiring process and what I like to do is to pull the signal output connections off the common tab in the middle that's my S plus and S minus connections and then the power leads I typically run those to the outside tabs and then we jump from one gauge for example on the front around to the gauge on the back but I'll show you a sketch um, to show you how to wire this we go over this in our standard workshops really easy to do. It's a really easy configuration to wire. Uh, pretty straightforward and widely used for torque measurements on a shaft. If you'd like to find out more information about this type of circuit or any other related to strain gauges, uh, please feel free to reach out to us at www.micro-measurements.com. Click Contact an Expert, and you'll be in touch with one of our applications engineers, and we'd be glad to help you. Or you can pick up the phone and call us at 919-365-3800 and just follow the prompts to Applications Engineering, and again, we'd be happy to help you solve this type of circuit or any other really related to strain gauges. Thank you.